Behold beautiful and brutal Alaska, a vast line rife with predators, where Dan Harrison and Captain Troy Givens will test their mettle. Right now we're loading up our beaver from Pacific Wings. We got Cole over here, he's our pilot. He's getting, uh, getting untied so we can start loading up. Dan and I are unloading all the gear for our week-long black bear hunt here in Southeast Alaska. Let's do this. Dan and I are doing this completely on our own. This is a do-it-yourself hunt in Southeast Alaska. No guides. The only help that we have is with Rockies Marine and Pacific Wings getting us transportation. But as far as hunting, taking care of the animal, protection, cooking, it's all on us. Here's food for thought. And all of your time here, have there been any bear attacks here? Yeah, oh yeah. 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 A buddy of mine who was a guide up on Admiralty, he got a, several years ago, he went in after wounded brown bear and... See, that's the problem. He got a hold of him. Yeah. Yeah. That is a problem. Yeah, he uh, he survived, but had a, he took him a long time to go back in the woods. Here in the southeast, it's well known for its very large Boone and Crockett sized black bears. Um, Kuyu Island has the largest population of black bears per square mile than any area in, in Alaska. And I've hunted this place three other times. This is my fourth time, but my first time doing it yourself. The difference between a black bear and a brown bear, they're just, you know, black bears are not intimidating. Like when you see a brown bear grizzly, they're just, you know exactly, the hair stands up and you know you're, you're on guard. But uh, a black bear, that's why they're so dangerous. Because in the dead, you have to If they come after you, they're gonna eat you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Brown bear just gonna slap you around normally. Normally. So they say. Kuyu Island is simply thick with bears, up to five per square mile, making this Alaska's densest concentration of Ursus Americanus. Accessible only by air, Dan and Troy will live and hunt here with these brutes. And should calamity strike, there'll be a far cry from safety and will be left to fend for themselves. Most important thing. Second most important thing. The whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> no, the two rifles. This week, we're using a Savage rifle chambered in 300 Win Mag with Federal Premium Ammunition outfitted with Bushnell Optics. From right here, we can glass the grassy areas across the bay and uh, possibly spot some bears this afternoon or for tomorrow morning. Once the bears are hit, they very rarely drop on the spot. Going in on the bush in this type of dense vegetation, Having a close encounter with a wounded black bear is not, not what you want. That means you have to make that first shot count. And that's why we're using Federal Premium Acubon ammunition. As humans expand their sprawl, black bears everywhere feel the crunch. And when man meets monster, danger often ensues. And mere days before Dan and Troy touched down on Kuyu, black bears had killed men in two separate attacks, something Devin DeLuca knows all too well. We're moving in on a black bear and I was laying in the sedge grass there and we could, we could only see part of him. And so I lined the hunter up, I said, get ready when he gets up, take your shot. And the bear got up on just two legs, just on his front legs and the, and, the, and the hunter shot. So he shot a little early, didn't let the bear stand up. He ended up gut shooting the bear. You know, with a gut shot bear, you could sit days for that bear to, to die out. So we had to go in after him. Followed for about another 100 yards. So we'd been tracking this bear for probably about 250 yards. And uh, suddenly I turned and the, and the bear was charging and uh, it came busting out of the bush so fast that I, I couldn't swing my gun. The bear leaped and I could see the bear going from my face. That was the one thing I remember the most. And uh, uh, clawed me across the face and clawed me across the chest and I was holding it like this. And then the bear dropped to the ground and it went back down the tunnel we had just come out of. You know, the adrenaline was pumping so I dropped down to my hands and knees and I grabbed my gun and I went after the bear as fast as I could at my hands and knees uh, down the tunnel. And, uh, and I could see the bear in front of me and I was going fast and he was going fast and uh, suddenly the bear took a left turn and went up a side tunnel. We, uh, we ended up finding it dead up the trail uh, uh, about another 300 yards. That's it, we're on our own. Stranded on this island of bears, our hunters quickly set up camp and get to the business at hand. Seeking, finding, and finishing these deadly beasts of the north. Day one here on Kuyu Island in Southeast Alaska. We're about to go do our first outing, go scout some locations where we think the bears are gonna be this afternoon based off of our research and intel on maps and talking to some local folks, and we'll see what it has to bring. The objective for this hunt is that we're gonna go out and spot and stalk these bears. We'll be using the inflatable boat to cruise the beach lines, the coastline, 
and uh, see if there's any bears out munching on the grass. Now that the dandelions are blooming, they're out going on vegetation. We're gonna beach the boat, and then from there it'll be on foot, spot and stock, and using the uh, cover and concealment of the terrain to make sure that we can get as close as we can without having a problem. Well, we made it across. We've got this bay that's really protected by the wind, and it's a perfect place for a bear to come out. If a bear does come out here tonight, we can jump in the boat and try to sneak up on them a little closer because it is 750 yards across there. This time of year in the southeast of Latvia, you're hunting these bears out on the grass flats along the shoreline of, of the coast of the island. Basically, the whole bay empties out. There's that much tidal flow is that this whole bay empties. Um, it's a very shallow bay. And as we were coming in, I saw a black object on the beach. Right there behind that log. It's about a six foot bear, five and a half. That's a marginal bear for Kuyu Island. Winded us. He was coming along the beach, and I think he was going to come over in the rocks for mussels. But uh, no, it's just cool as heck. Beautiful bear. Easy boy. There's a bear out here. One bear. That's exciting. That's cool. With multiple bear sightings already, Dan Harrison and Troy Givens gear up for their first full day in pursuit of a world-class Alaskan black bear. It's day two here in southeast Alaska. We are preparing to take the boat out and go patrol some of these coves that we couldn't get to yesterday. Each morning when we leave camp, we have a routine. We head west, going down towards the Bay of Pillars, checking out the different coves in there. If we don't see anything there, then we head east and we go up to some different areas that we spotted when we came in on the float plane. Oh, it was a good day yesterday. I'm, I'm excited for this morning. We're gonna go explore the end of the bay here. Um, we haven't seen it yet, so let's go. Let's get to it. Even out here with a five mile an hour wind, that's enough wave to cause potential problems in this little boat. So we need to be very vigilant in how we go through the water and try to stay close to shore to use the wind brakes as much as possible. Bear. Dead ahead. There's a downed tree. We just spotted our first bear this morning. This is weed crap. I spotted the first bear this morning. Great guide, great hunting partner, great buddy. We've been hunting a few times together and we've been working for about the past year putting this whole trip together and uh, having Dan along, who's done several of these types of hunts, has been a really big asset, and uh, I'm very glad that, that he and I are doing this together. Hearts start pounding as the guys close the distance on this target. We're going in real nice and slow. We're trying to, we got a kind of another marginal wind. It's blowing almost a crosswind, but it's still favoring the bear. We're gonna try to get up there and get a better look at it. yesterday how even this, this is a small bear look how much more powerful it looks when it walks it's got a real slender back end and it looks like it's more streamlined you see that yeah it's definitely a boar he looks to be more legs than body yeah he's small it's a very young bear on the second day as we were coming in troy spotted a really yeah, it was a small bear two or three year old bear and we were looking at that and we are about ready to, to leave. Oh, there's a bear right in front of us. That's a shooter. Right in front of us. As we spun the boat around, Dan spotted a nice bear bedded down in the grass. You could just see the hump of his back, and he was munching on the vegetation. That's a big bear. That one you're going to kill. Not quiet. Oh, sh I'm sorry. There was 300 yards of tidal flat between us and that bear. We have walked on these tidal flats for a day. Most of the stuff that we've dealt with was solid. This bay, however, when Troy stepped out of the boat, he sank almost to his waist and just muck. I'm stuck. <laughs> Don't lose your boot. Oh, 
Is the bear still there? The injuries that Troy received in Afghanistan, it was a hard thing for him to, to overcome because not only is his pelvic and hips very fragile, he risked the chance of dislocating his hips, actually pulling them out of his socket because of the stress and the, and the suction on his boots. And I, it was very concerning. We had an incoming tide at that point. <sighs> Troy, you gotta get up to the vegetation. That water is coming in. Not only was it a fight, to get through the mud, but it was also dangerous as well. I was stuck up past my knees in this goo, and Dan was in the boat, and if Dan hopped out of the boat and Dan got stuck, then we're both really in trouble, and the tide was gonna start coming in. So it took every ounce of energy and strength I had to get through that mud, that quicksand-like stuff, so that we didn't have ourselves in a dangerous situation any more than already was. While Dan returned to the boat to await the incoming tide, Troy battled his way to land to regroup and then refocus on the task at hand. Stalk and kill that big old boar. Oh man, my leg hurt. Ugh. The last time I saw the bear, he was around this bend, a few hundred yards in, munching on some grass. So we're gonna go in, see if we can put on a final stock. My stuff's soaked. My boots are full of mud, full of shells. So I'm gonna ditch them so I can move a little better. In order to walk, I had to actually take my boots off, get everything out. And by that point, I was so jazzed up that I just went barefoot from that point on, uh, loaded up the rifle. came around the bend where we knew he was back bedded down in the grass. I could see him. I had about 50 yards to go before I had a nice shooting stable platform. And I was able to get down, crouch behind a nice rock, get the scope out, check him out, make sure he was definitely a shooter bear. And as soon as he presented me with a good broadside opportunity, it definitely made an impact. You could hear the report of the round and then the bear ran off. I did not want that bear going to a thick, dark, dense rainforest brush because now we have to track a wounded bear and we don't have the visibility. I fired his second shot, spun him around, and when he spun around, he stopped and he looked dead at me and I knew I was in trouble. He knew where I was and I felt like he was coming for me. I fired a third shot and it dropped him right in his tracks, and he perished quickly and cleanly, and that's the way we wanted to do it. So we first saw the bear about 100 yards from here, up in the grass, and last I saw him drop, it was just before the tree line, and the grass is kind of tall enough to where he might have gotten away, he might still be there, so we're gonna take it slow, approach with caution, and just be ready. Last thing we really need right now is a pissed off black bear. After I saw the bear go down, I waited about 30 minutes, I was a little nervous. We didn't hear the typical death moan that bears make uh, when they perish. And tide was coming in. We wanted to make sure that we got this thing done. Yes. Look at this. Wow. With proper shot placement and proper ammunition, this bear did not go very far. Maybe 30 yards in total from where he first got shot. Look at that. Pause on this thing. All the hard work, planning, the preparation, getting in shape, making sure you've got everything nailed down, preparing for plan A, B, and C, and it all comes together in a moment like this when you're able to take such a beautiful animal. Making it through the mud on that first approach, it was dangerous enough. I wasn't willing to take that risk again unnecessarily. So we decided to wait for the boat to come in on high tide, which gave us about four or five hours to dress and clean the bear. Good job, buddy. Thank you. <sighs> Teamwork. Teamwork. All right, back to camp. Oh. 
boat is heavy. 